whether whether it says so on screen or not. If you don't want to be recorded, I guess you don't want to be here. Um, if you do want to be here, we're happy to have you. Uh, welcome to Online Presenters. This is a club that meets online and focuses on learning skills for better webinars and online events. We do want to thank Ring Central for allowing us to use the Ring Central Meetings platform as our online meeting platform. Uh, we consider them a sponsor. They're allowing you to use a demo account. And they do want me to let you know that the cloud is winning in business communications and Ring Central is winning in the cloud. Say, we have at least one guest here. So we, we do encourage you to pay some attention to the audio because audio is one of the most important parts of video. And that means using either a headset or in a pinch, a pair of earbuds will do to prevent audio feedback. Mute your mic when it's not your turn. If you're using the built-in laptop microphone, uh, typing comes across as really, really loud. And you can also toggle your video on and off and your mic on and off. Uh, at some points we may mute everybody just to prevent any background noise. Uh, but you can always unmute yourself if you need to speak up. Also, in this video environment, there's a control in the upper right-hand corner that allows you to go between the gallery view where you see everybody and the active speaker view. So usually when somebody's giving a speech, you want to be on the active speaker view. There is also something where you can pin the video. And we were, we were advising people to use this uh, to keep track of the timer. I'm finding that that's not working as well uh, as I'd like it to. Uh, but uh, keeping track of the timer when you are the speaker is one of the tricks to this environment. Make sure that you can see the, um, the timer when you are presenting so that you know when you're running out of time. If you're visiting uh, and are interested in becoming a member, we ask you to attend at least two meetings as a guest. Uh, this is an advanced club, so it's not for absolute beginners. I, I know our guest tonight said he had some experience with another Toastmasters club, so it should be fine. Um, and even if you don't uh, meet our usual minimum requirement, you make a one to two minute speech about why you want to join, we can vote you in. And with that, it is showtime. I will get out of the screen sharing mode. And I'm going to make Monica our, the host of the meeting as she leads us through as Toastmaster of the Day. Monica, you're Thank on. you, David. Fellow Toastmasters, today is Bugs Bunny Day, and I will be giving quotes throughout the meeting from Bugs Bunny himself. First one, don't take life too seriously. You'll never get out alive. For our meeting, we have different people that fill roles so that we can have a successful and very good feedback for the meeting. The all counter tonight is a Andy, and I'm gonna ask him to give his description for the role. The role of the all counter is to listen carefully, improve that listening skill, identify when you're using crutch words, phrases that are not correctly structured, and words that are impactful or just wrong. And I'll give a report when called upon. Thank you, Andy. The next one is timer, and that will be David Carr. You are muted, David. You're muted. <laughs> yes, I am, or yes, I was, sorry about that. So I've set up the timing so that you will see it in the background behind me. You will see green at the minimum and shortly thereafter followed by yellow and then red. So watch for those colors as they come by. I'll try and keep it as clear as I can. And I did want to show off just real quick how I'm doing this. This is the timing tool that is built into uh, our website and it does allow me to 
toggle between the requirements for different speeches and keep track along the way. So handy dandy tech tool. Thanks, David. The next row will be Grammarian. That's Michael. Good evening, everyone. I'll be listening for innovative and creative uses of the English language. We're all speaking English tonight, as well as possibilities of misuse of the language. And I will adhere to the guidelines in the Toastmasters manual. Could you also introduce the word of the day? Ah, I can do that. The word of the day is abide, which is a verb. And the definition is to bear patiently or to tolerate, to endure without yielding, to wait for, to accept without objection, to remain stable or fixed in a state or to continue in a place. And an example, abide may sound rather old fashioned these days. The word has, let's see, are they using abide in this example? No, probably not. I will abide by the normal guidelines prescribed for the word master this evening. Thank you, Michael. The next role will be vote counter, Jim Barber. Hi, everybody. As vote counter this evening, I will be determining who are the winners in our three categories of speaking. I accept PayPal, MasterCard, and Visa. However, I cannot abide checks, so please plan accordingly. Thank you, Jim. Chat monitor will be Adrian tonight. If you could explain your role, please. Hello everyone, I am your chat monitor today. At the end of the meeting, I will summarize any hot topics that show up in our chat. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Our first speaker tonight is Roger Fung. And he is speaking from the presentation mastery level two, learning your style. Do you say yes to yourself more than no, or do you say no to yourself more than yes? What's holding you back? Join me in welcoming Roger as he speaks on what, why not. If you may, if you can unmute yourself, or maybe Monica can unmute everybody. Love to receive whatever feedback you have throughout the speech. Imagine, you have been asked to become a head chef in a popular restaurant. You have never taken any cooking class, and your best go-to dish was instant mac in a box. <laughs> Would you say yes? Imagine, you've been asked to become a choir director at a church, but you didn't know how to play any musical instrument, and you cannot read music. Would you say yes? Imagine a management job opens up in China. You had to go over there, but you didn't speak any Chinese and you don't, didn't really like Chinese food. Would you say yes? Would you take on any of these jobs when you didn't have the right training or the experience? Man, I'm Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and I'll guess. Would you like to know? The secret to success. Yes. Two words. <laughs> Why not? Now those earlier examples were not some random made up fake news. I am no CNN. Those were just a few times where I said, why not? I did become a head chef so six months. I became a choir director 27 years ago. And today, I still don't know any music. <laughs> I took that job in China, and I never regretted it. Now, we don't have all night, so I will just tell you one of those jobs. And that is that job as a choir 
director. This happened back in my college day. I was at church. I was praying. I said, God, what do you want me to do for you? Then I got a phone call. Roger, join the choir. And I said, wait a minute. That must have been a message from heaven. I didn't know how to play any musical instrument, but God has a different plan. He wants me to save the world with my beautiful voice. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Want to know a secret? I did it for the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so one day on a Sunday morning, we were getting ready to practice, to warm up our voices, and then boom, the secretary burst into our room. She made the announcement, the choir director is sick and he is not coming in. We're panicking, we're looking left and right. And then all of a sudden, all of our eyes turned over to the pianist because she was the most experienced member. She said, oh, don't worry everybody, just listen. When I play, you just follow. She said, okay, we start to line up and she's starting to play. Guess what? We were horrible. That song has four beats. Some sing seven, some sing six. Some came in too early, others came in too late. You know Roger. What will Roger do? Roger came out from the back. He got in front of everybody and said, listen up. Now four beats in this song. You just watch me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I nodded over to the piano, she stopped playing. And as we continued, we actually were doing it. We were actually in sync. And the whole choir was singing in one unison voice. Of course, just like a great Toastmaster, I clapped and said, good job, keep it up. And I start walking back to where I usually stand. But they start kicking and screaming. They said, no, 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 no. Roger, you have to get in front of us. Because if you don't direct us, we are not going to get done. Me, the guy who could not make, play any musical instrument and cannot even read music. But what did I say? Why not? We lined up. We got into the worship hall. And at the right time, I gave the signal to the choir. I looked over to the pianist. She stopped playing. And then I went, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I was waving like a madman because I was nervous. My legs were shaking. And this was back in the 80s. I was channeling Jane Fonda. The only thing that was missing were the kicks. You remember? One more, two more, and three more. <laughs> and in case those of you who don't know, who Jane Fonda is, you just Google her name. <laughs> anyway, we continued on. And as we sing, I'm proud to tell you, that day, not only did we make it, we sang one of the most beautiful songs ever sung at that church. And I became the full-time choir director for two years. My fellow Toastmasters, every single day we come across opportunity and we are being asked whether to say yes or to say no. Don't worry about what the naysayer may say to you. Worry about what you are gonna to say to yourself. Are you gonna say yes? Are you gonna say why not to yourself? That day at church, 27 years ago, I said yes. And I became a choir director for two years. And during those two years, I dated every choir piano <laughs> of that church. <laughs> Orchestra, the children's choir, the, the quartet, even the Chinese choir. And I didn't even speak much Chinese at all. So in closing, when we are confronted with opportunity, the question we need to ask is not what others will say. We need to ask what we are going to say. Are we going to say yes? So next time, if you get asked to become a chef at a restaurant, what do you say? Yes. And if you get asked 
the opportunity to go overseas for a job, what would you say? Yes. 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 And if you get the chance to become a choir director, even though you don't know any music, what would you say? Yes. yes. <laughs> 27 years ago, not only did I date every choir pianist of that church, I married one of them. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Back to you, man on Toastmaster. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute everybody again. <laughs> Maybe, if my computer will cooperate. All right. The next speaker will be Scott Johnson. He is going to be delivering the Pathways presentation, part one. We do have another part coming at a later time. The speech is gonna be anywhere from 18 to 20 minutes and we will have time for question and answers after. So maybe jot notes if you need to, but I'm gonna turn it over to Scott now so that he can start his Pathways presentation. Scott. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. It's a pleasure being here as a, an online guide to present Pathways. This club has uh, got some, some experience. So we have members that are Pathways guides. We have members that are online guides. We have members that have got some knowledge on Pathways. We also have some members that have already started Pathways. But to be fair to people that have members that haven't had any experience with Pathways, I'm going to start at the start so everybody's on the same page. So the people that have know a bit about Pathways will just have to bear with me and uh, you might take this time to maybe you might learn something or you might have the opportunity to be able to support your fellow members. I'll just go to screen share. Okay, this is an exciting time for, for Toastmasters and for, for district, un, undistricted clubs as such as online presenters and Pathways is coming on the 15th of May, providing we get the opportunity to train 70% of clubs. And it's a very exciting time because Pathways is extremely exciting and I'm really excited about Pathways. So, so you may well aware Pathways or Toastmasters, we have five core competencies. One is public speaking, one is interpersonal communication, one is three is uh, strategic leadership, management, and all those produce confidence or self-esteem. Confidence we can't learn, but it is a byproduct of all the rest of the four. And we have a look at some samples of some past. You'll notice dynamic leadership, persuasive influence, You'll notice that there's some numbers up the top, one, two, three, and this one got one, three, two. And that indicates what those paths have in them. So dynamic leadership, it has public speaking, interpersonal communication, and strategic leadership, while persuasive influence has exactly the same, but they're around the other order. So we have public speaking, strategic leadership, and we also have interpersonal communication. If we look at the other paths, they are exactly the same. Effective coaching, innovative planning, they all have either one, two, three, or four. If you take notice, presentation mastery is the closest we have to the old system of the competent communicator. It mainly only targets public speaking. And of interest, we have a couple more paths coming out. Very soon we'll have the path, a humor on, a path on humor which is supposed to be coming at the end of this calendar year. We'll also have advanced leadership and we'll have a mini path coming out also by the end of the transition period. Uh, you're probably aware transition period, we are able to run side by side with pathways as well as the traditional system. And by the time that comes out, by the time the transition period ends, we should have a mini path on parliamentary procedures which is quite exciting. So Toastmaster National is continuing to add pass and it's an exciting time for Toastmasters and for our personal development. 
we have five levels in each path. Level one is mastering fundamentals. We have an icebreaker, evaluation and feedback, and we also have researching and presenting. Level two is learning your style. We have two required projects, and we just heard from one of those projects, which Roger just gave us one on body language. And also of Exop is introducing to Toastmasters mentoring. Level three is increasing your knowledge. It's one required project plus a minimum of two electives. And by the time you've ended level three, you would have served as a to topic master, a Toastmasters or evaluator. As we go up the levels, it gets a little bit more difficult. So level four is building skills. One required project plus a minimum of one elective. And level five is demonstrating expertise. So you've got one required project plus a minimum of one elective and also a project on reflect on your path. Evaluations. Toastmasters International has worked extremely hard on evaluations. The evaluation forms have changed quite a bit. We probably used to sometimes getting wishy-washy evaluations, and that's why we come to Toastmasters. We come to Toastmasters so we can get great feedback and so we can improve, and that's what we're here for. We want to know what we did well and how we can improve so we can improve our presentations and our speaking style. The evaluation form comes in three parts. This is the front page. You can see on the top, you put the member's name, the date, the evaluation, and this one is making connections through networking. So every, every evaluation form has got a different um, topic on it, but you can get generic evaluation forms should you go to a meeting and not bring in an evaluation form or not get an evaluation form emailed through from your, from your speaker. We have the speech title, we have the purpose statement, we have notes for the evaluator. You can probably see down the bottom, it doesn't show you probably on the slide, but there's three sections in the general comments. So it's got you excelled at, uh, what you did well, and what you need to work on. The second sheet has a list of numbering systems. So if we just look at vocal uh, variety, we have five, four, three, two, one. One is the lowest, five is the highest. And the next sheet, will actually give us a breakdown of what one, two, three, four, or five means. As you can see on this one here, we have, if we go back to vocal variety, if you, to give a, a person a, a, who is speaking a five, you're indicating that they use tools of tone, speed, and volume to perfection. While if you give them a one, you've given them an effective use of tone, speed, and volume. And, you may be in your right to suggest that maybe they do that project again because um, one's pretty in, ineffective. Even if you get a three, that's still a great, that's a great result because it's used tone, speed and volume as tools, which is an excellent result. We have badges and awards, which is quite different. Toastmaster National, we do get recon, uh, um, recognition for what we do, but Toastmaster International wants to give us more recognition earlier. So they've designed these badges and awards because we do put a lot of time into Toastmasters, whether we're an online club or whether we're at a bricks and mortar club, we put quite a bit of time into doing speeches, researching, attending. So recognition is always good. As you can see, the top level of badges, one is when you've done level one, two is level two, three is level three, level four. And when you get that pretty badge at the end, that indicates you've completed the path and you will receive a lovely certificate from Toastmasters National. But if you wish to have a certificate for every level, you're able to go into Basecamp and print a, a level out a, a certificate yourself, or maybe the VPE might be able to do that for you. Depends what club you're in. The badges below, there's actually five. There's only four showing here. And this is for feedback to members of your club. So you might, today we, we heard Roger do a great speech. He might think, well, Roger did a really great speech. I want to give him some feedback. I want to give him a, a badge to say what a great speech that was. Or someone might do a great assignment role and you wish to just send, give them some feedback and send them a badge. These badges are ideal for giving them recognition of how well they've done in a club meeting. And of course, here we see a certificate next to that 
as I mentioned, you can print that out. And once you complete the path, you the, the path you can get a certificate from Toastmasters International. Okay, now we come to the all elusive, the distinguished Toastmaster Award through Pathways. We still do the same thing. We still got we still must do club leadership. So a year as an executive officer or two consecutive six month terms. We still need to do club sponsorship or youth leadership or a speech craft workshop. Where the next one, district leadership, where it's a little bit different on online clubs, is it's not required for on district clubs. So you don't need to re, you don't require to do a district leadership role as an area director or because we don't have area directors, we don't have division directors, we're undistricted, so we have uh, not the same sort of support uh, as uh, a butcher mortar club may have. Whoops, wrong one, hold on, let's go back. The next one is, of course, is the club mentor. So we still need to be a club mentor or coach. Hold on, we're just having a bit of trouble here. Give me a sec. I'll just pass on. So, and the education, we still need to do two education awards. So we still need to do two full pass. And we, st we still need to do, we, there's no HPL anymore in the pathway. So we need to do a special distinguished uh, program, a, a project. Okay. The end of level two, we meant we glossed over an introduction, one of the projects introduction to mentoring, which is a great thing. We can all still be mentors in club. We all have mentorship within club with a brick mortar or online, but Pathways has decided that we really need to push on the on their mentoring because mentoring is such an important part in Toastmasters as well as in business, in communities. So once you've reached level three, you get the opportunity to, it's a, it's a mini path, not part, not part of your normal directory. So it's not, they run side by side. Your paths run side by side with the mentoring. You can see there's, there's four different projects. There's Pathways Mentoring Program. We've already done the introduction, introduction to Pathways Mentoring, which we did on level two, the last project on level two. We then do Prepare to Mentor, Mentoring and Advanced Mentoring. So I would encourage people that once they get to that level, once they can take the mentoring on, it's a, it's a great a great achievement. It's uh, it's helping your fellow Toastmasters. It's hope, helping your fellow members, and you get a lovely award like that at the end once you've once you've completed. It goes for six months, so uh, you need to have a, a protege. Well, they call it protege now. They don't call it a, a mentee. It's called protege in pathways. So once you've done a six months completion you get this pretty badge and that qualifies you as a, as a pathways mentor. And which is, which is excellent because in the old system, we really didn't get much information about mentoring. We sort of, uh, it was just basically on experience, but there's other projects now that really give you some theory about uh, how to be an efficient mentor, which is great. Okay. So here we go. So we've, Base camp or pathways, there's either two ways of doing it, doing it online or doing it with printed material like we're used to with the competent communicator and the competent leader and the advanced manuals. As you can probably see through base camp, you are able to do all the 10 pass as well as the eight languages I have for non-English. Unfortunately, once you go to printed material, it's very limited. So it's only limited to five and you only had two non-English. I would encourage people that have, are not on Pathways already to, to go online because it gives you interaction, gives you tutorials, there's so much more information and you have the opportunity to pick whatever path you would like. Okay, as I mentioned before, we have a transition period. So that at this present time, they're hoping that everybody will be on Pathways by June 2000 or the end of June 2020. And so we have a transition period at the present time, meaning that we can run side by side. So we can do the old traditional program and still do complete our manuals that we were doing. And also we can run on pathways. So you can work both on concurrently. Reinstated members, they have the same choice as existing members. So if a reinstated member comes back, 
they're able to do the traditional systems as well as pathways. For new members, after rollout, straight on pathways. Current awards in the other system do not go towards pathways for because they're two different systems, they're two different educational systems, so you, you can't really chop and change. After the transition period, no old, old awards would be granted but you get to keep your old traditional awards, which is, uh, which is always good. Pathways doesn't charge, change the club meeting experience at all. So we still have the same. We still have speeches. We still have table topics. We still have evaluations. We still have a timer, grammarian, everything exactly the same. The only thing that is different is Pathways is just a different educational system, but uh, all the club experience is exactly the same. Toastmasters wants... The club, the club culture is the, the main guiding force behind Toastmasters at, at club level. So uh, nothing is to change uh, at all, which is good. The thing that goes side by side also is once we get to the Distinguished Club Program, in transition time, so the end of June 2020, we can run with the current Distinguished Club Program as well as the Distinguished Club Program in Pathways. As you can see on the screen, we have two CCs that equals four level ones, or if we go down to number four, one more ACB, ACS or an ACG is equivalent to two level threes. And this is only, so it's only six, six of any 12 goals. So you could have a couple in the program, the current DCP, and you could have a couple in the DCP in pathways. But obviously once we're all on pathways, End of June 2020, it will only be the Pathways Educational Goals. Okay, that completes the presentation. Happy to take uh, happy to take questions. If you don't understand anything or you want to answer something, so please, have we got any questions in the chat box, Adrian? Adrian's not there. Any more questions? I actually wondered if maybe, maybe we should ask Elaine is here as somebody who, who does not have experience with, uh, with Toastmasters prior to this. So she's probably drowning a little bit. <laughs> we're, 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 sort of, we're sort of assuming some, some knowledge. Elaine, uh, did you understand that, so we, well, we have a transition in <laughs> how the formal education program works. I just wondered if, uh, how, how clearly that came through to you and if you have any specific questions. Well, fancy that. This, uh, <laughs> this afternoon, I listened to George Marshall's presentation <laughs> explaining pathways, okay. which was excellent. So, Everything I heard from the presentation now, it was like, okay, I understand that because I had been primed. <laughs> Good. Good to hear. Good to hear, Elaine. Because the problem is that um, some of the clubs I have are, are in Pakistan. Uh, there's a couple in, they're all around the world in Russia. So it, it's, it's difficult. And I did send an email out and, and most people were sort of on song with, with pathways. But uh, obviously... Some not as much as others, so I sort of had to start at the start. But uh, I'm glad you picked. I'm glad you've had a, a pre a prep by George Marshall. Yeah, uh, and Scott, Scott, I have a question. I mean, I really liked your presentation. In one of your slides, you mentioned that uh, online. I mean, the club members can give their feedback online. So, if it is a brick and mortar club, how will the club members give the feedback online? Uh, well, what you need to do is log on to Toastmaster International, oh. go, to, go to Pathways, log, log on as a member. But one, thing you must, one thing you must remember is when you, when you log in as a, as a member, you just need to make sure that the club you want to interact with, if you only belong to one club, there will only be one club that comes as your, as your home club. But if you long, belong to multiple clubs, you have a drop menu down where you might have you might belong to two or three brick, mortar, brick and mortar clubs. You just need to make sure that the club you wish to interact with is Bennett. Uh, yes, Scott. Frozen. Scott seems to have been frozen. Uh, yes. Well, 
I guess he won't run over time Bye -bye. if he says. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can, uh, oh, that's tall, folks. I, I, I think he's I think he's coming unstuck. Your your video is frozen for a minute, Scott. <laughs> what was the question there you were answering? I mean, anyway, I got the answer. So depending on the, you need to log into the pathways and choose the club that you are going to uh, give the feedback on and continue on that. So that is the crux of the matter, and then the screen froze. That's fine. And thank you, okay. Scott. All right, thank you, Scott. We're, I guess we'll we'll declare this um, uh, done for now, and maybe he'll come back to life for us uh, in a few minutes. We, okay, okay. we will move on. I need to get the timers report for both speakers. Adrian, did you have a comment first? Um, I was just going to say that there were some questions in the chat. Monica, oh. if we have time, I can. Well, uh, Scott, actually, uh, you're muted. Scott seems to be back with us. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, something went wrong. Um, everybody froze, and I was the only one moving. And then <laughs> well, I, dropped, I know I dropped out. So. Team the opposite to us, Scott, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have a few minutes left for your questions, Scott. Uh, all right. Um, we'll get him back. You just need to go on to, on to the tile feedback, and and go in there, and then you can present. It'll be much easier for the next presentation, but it's a bit hard without the, the current slides to, to actually show you. But you just need to go to feedback and this send a send a badge to a, to one of the members in your in your club that is active. Does that help at all? Yes. Morelli? Yes, thank you. Thank you. It's okay. Adrian, what were some of the other questions in the chat? They were asking about the difference between the mentee and the protege. They're exactly the same. The mentee and pro the same, but in in the old traditional system, when we had the mentoring program in a club, it used to be always the mentor and the mentee. Well, Toastmasters okay. has changed the name from from mentee to protege. Well, so. It seems like a, a somewhat more formal program. Yeah, too, that's it. That's part um, of what so, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So you find yeah. in all the information about mentoring in Pathways, it'll mention a mentor and a protege. Okay, and one other comment um, was from Lou. He said that he thought that the HPL was the capstone project. Can you clarify that? No, it's not. Can it's you not, clarify um, the difference between the two for the rest of us? Because we don't know what the cap. I don't know what the capstone project is. Well, well you, you won't. Um, I, I haven't been subject to it either. Um, but there's a special distinguished Toastmaster project at um, when you get to I think level four, it becomes active. But yeah. you, there is, if you look in. The, some of the elect, some of the past, you'll find that there's actually an HPL project to do as a as a an elective, but it's a little bit different that it you don't have a committee to work with, so it's basically the same, but you will not have a committee. But there's a special distinguished Toastmaster and capstone project. Once you get the level four, it should open up. Okay, well we'll we'll have another Scott at, uh, shot at Scott uh, next. Are you going to talk more about the software in the, the next installment, Scott? Or you want to give us a little preview of what part two will look like? Part part two is actually getting started, so getting online. So once once the next pro once the next presentation comes along, we actually go into base camp and I'll show you for people that haven't selected a path, I'll show you how to select a path. And also we go into the back end to show you a little bit about but uh, what base camp managers do. So obviously base camp managers are either president, secretary or VPE. And we will go into the back end and show you a little bit about the base camp manager, their roles and, and how they um, will award people and give people the opportunity to go on to the next levels. Okay. And, and part two will be next week. Uh, next week we'll also have our election of officers for the, for the coming year. Okay. So let's see. Um, I wondered if we might take a moment now. We, uh, we were going to have uh, Elaine was going to make her why I want to join the club speech. And can we, why don't we give her a moment to do that now? And then we'll, we can come back to evaluations. Uh, you posted the times in the chat box. So if everybody could send their vote, that would be great while we're doing this to yeah, Jim do, do you think it's appropriate to vote oh, between Jim the 
a regular speech and a passage. Uh, I don't I don't know if, if that makes sense for a vote uh, this evening. Oh, okay. Then no vote for this one. We'll go on to the evaluators after Elaine. All right, <laughs> Elaine. Let's let's give you a minute and uh, just uh, tell us a little bit about what you're why you're interested in this. Well, I'm Elaine Nieberding from Bel Air, Maryland. Spell that M E R R Y L A N D. I hope you'll remember that. I like to bring levity to wherever I am, and I can see that this group is a lighthearted group, so I think I would fit in here well. But mostly, I am most appreciative of and curious about this group because you are early adopters, forging ahead in this online arena to try to help and serve and grow Toastmasters as well as your own skills. Um, I have a little bit of that early adopter experience myself. Now, I must let you know, in all honesty, I have not been a Toastmasters Club member before. When David was mentioning something about my local club, well, I visited it once. And then I heard there were online clubs, and I said, I think I need to check them out. Like I need to invoke the old Bugs Bunny thing and say, mm, what's up, Doc? With um, the online Toastmaster thing. So it actually was in 1971 when I was uh, in secretarial work in um, a summer job in Princeton, New Jersey, an executive secretary who was kind of a mentor to me, she said, Elaine, join Toastmasters sometime. And so I said, okay. But alas, uh, it wasn't until recently I decided this was the thing for me to do. Now, back to me being an early adopter. In 2014, I heard about Google Hangouts. Now, I had done um, performing and speaking presentations in a variety of, on a variety of tops and a, in a variety of venues over the years. And when I heard about Hangouts, I thought, hmm, I think I'd really like to do that. And so, in the last, since 2014, I have probably uh, produced and hosted 50 to 60 programs, mostly on Google Hangouts, but have lots of experience to share um, with folks about especially the new live stream venues, Be Live TV with Facebook Live, um, Crowdcast, and others. And I don't want to run over, so I'll say it's back to you, and I'll say, Goodbye, folks, and take off my gloves that I was wearing in honor of Bugs, who wears gloves. <laughs> I bet you say that to all the wabbits. That's all, folks. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to our evaluations. Our first evaluator tonight is Krishna, and he's going to be evaluating Roger's speech. Krishna. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, do you think we have a Charlie Chaplin or not a Bugs Bunny, but a Mickey Mouse the Apprentice Sorcerer with us? That's what I felt when I was looking at Roger. Roger, thank you for sharing. Thank you for letting me know that you're a ladies man. And thank you for confirming that you are a one man or one woman man. You used your body language purposefully. The objective, one of the objectives of your speech was to learn, practice, and refine the use of body language for the nonverbal communication part of your message. And what I saw was that in action. Congratulations. You not only were using your hand gestures with purpose, you had a point where you mentioned check in a restaurant, the musician going to China. I saw myself coming with you to those places. You also had another instance where you put into action when panicking. Eyes turned to the pianist. When I play, Follow me. I saw those movements. I saw those things happening. You didn't tell me. You were showing me. That was well done. You also did something that I, I believe is a challenge for me. 
the use of the speaking area in an online environment. You did that to nearly perfection. You were standing, you not only used the width of your space, at some point you came close to the screen to tell me a secret. And then you went back to go into the depth of your message. And here's my first recommendation. The challenge of going in front and at back and as well side to side is, especially in an online environment, we're still mastering that, is to have the synchronization between the message and the body language. The synchronization was there throughout until one point where you said, I walk behind, but you walk behind first. That's what, that's what I saw. I saw you walk behind first. And then I heard the words walk behind first. I was expecting them to be together. So that's one recommendation for you to work on. Synchronization of the verbal and the nonverbal. The second recommendation is a bit tricky because I'm still struggling with that. Is it's, it's related to the second objective of your speech, to be aware of not only intentional, but unintentional body language and gestures. And that's where I think you can improve. Uh, you're already at a very good level, and if you practice that, that's going to go up. Uh, the case of yes and why not. I saw the same hand gestures. I was expecting yes and why not. And you had that message, why not. So having two different hand gestures would have made me in my head two different messages and put the emphasis on the why not. Nevertheless, well done. And I do recommend you to take the part job, the part time job of a choir leader. You excel at that, my friend. Thank you. Over to you, Ms. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Krishna. Our second evaluator is Samuel Moran, and he will be evaluating Scott Johnson. Thank you, Madam Toastmasters. Uh, fellow Toastmasters, to abide by Scott's request, he asked me to evaluate it in three specific areas more than anything else. The first one was the online presence, the use of slides, uh, slides and the QA time, how it was handled. To begin with the presentation, doing a presentation like this that is very information heavy and data heavy is sometimes difficult to do when you don't have all the data, when you have the data in front of you and you have to read it. Uh, from the online presence, since you asked me to evaluate that, one of the things that I will start with, uh, if you want, if you were looking for, I don't know, I don't think you were looking for a professional look this time, uh, but part of the online presence means uh, being, uh, you know, present yourself first, and dressing appropriately for appropriately for the presentation. The other thing that I noticed that made me disconnect a little bit from the presentation was uh, the fact that you were reading on the side. So most of the time, your your eye your eyes were looking to your right or, or your yeah to your right, and I it's totally understandable. This presentation was very data heavy, and you need to remember a lot of things. You need to be accurate, otherwise, it doesn't make, make any sense for us to learn something that is just, you know, that you just pull out of the air. Maybe a different way would be to have the, the camera in front of you and the screen displayed there, like uh, maybe I know there are apps that they can roll up the like a teleprompter or something like that, that they can do that. That might help. So you are focused on the camera while still looking at reading your screen. That might that might be something that will help you enhance your your online presence the next time. The slides uh, were great, uh, a little bit data heavy for what I like, but again, because of the type of presentation, that works great. I uh, particularly like the fact that you did a pull out or whoever created the slides, so the slides were very heavy. They had a pull out of the text, so the small text became visible and we were more understandable and readable. So that was the slides were perfect to me. Uh, the Q&A, that was great. It started great because you were engaged. You came forward, you were looking at the camera and you were engaged with the audience. Unfortunately, either we froze that for you, it looked to us that you froze to us, but 
we'll, we'll leave that to the technology. Uh, other than that, information was great. It flowed perfectly. Uh, I will say the only improvement that I would do is figure out a way to have the text in front of you so you look at the screen and it has the camera while you're reading it. And with that, thank you, Mrs. Tosmas, Madam Tosmas. Thank you, Sam, for your evaluation. David, if you could post the times in the chat box and then we will do the vote. And Jim Barber is our vote counter, so just send it to him. Well, actually, I think Sam Moran is going to win because Christian went four seconds over. All right. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> okay. So not, not a lot of voting going on yep. tonight. Uh, although actually, um, we're, we're supposed <laughs> to ask for a vote on inviting uh, Elaine into the club. Yes. So send your votes to Jim. It's usually not too much of a, re uh, of a race between the yeses and the noes, but we're supposed to have it on the record. So uh, send your votes to Jim if you would like to invite Elaine to join our club. Okay, and while everyone is voting, also we're going to ask for the reports. I will ask for the report from the grammarian, Michael, so we can abide by the time. Oh, got that, got that right in there at the last, the last <laughs> minute. Okay. <laughs> All right. The word of the day was abide, and I heard it from, <laughs> from you, and Monica, and from Jim Barber, and I use it myself. I didn't hear it at any other time this evening. I have some comments for Roger. I, you started your speech, imagine, with three questions, and you used the triad of the three times and the three questions. And you gave us adequate time for response, which I appreciated. There are, for the most part, you were perfect. I do have some minor comments for you. Uh, you. You said, I will tell you one of those jobs. I'll tell you about one of those. Um, all of our eyes turned over to the pianist, turned towards, or turned towards. And the entire chorus was singing in one unison voice. So in unison would be correct or in one voice. Otherwise, fabulous. Thank you, Roger. For Scott, uh, it may be a, uh, a down under euf euphemism. Uh, Toastmasters has decided we need to push on the mentoring, focus on or, or <laughs> emphasize and uh, Another very minor thing, at this present time, although in the following sentence you used at the present time, uh, or so you could say at this time. And uh, let's see, otherwise perfect. And Christian, I had uh, did that to nearly perfection. You were talking about the use of body language. So it would be near perfection or uh, uh, was nearly perfect. Otherwise, uh, I have no other comments, and that is my report this evening, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Michael. Our next report will come from The Watcher, which is Jim Dent. Okay. What I noticed tonight <laughs> was uh, there was a few cases where there was some excessive background noise from somebody. Other than that, there was a little bit of background noise occasionally, but not really distractive. Um, everybody seemed to have good framing. Uh, nobody was chopped off at the nose, you know, down or anything. So uh, that's a good thing. I think that's something that a lot of the online clubs are improving on, including this one, is having a good frame. I have a little trouble with my lighting because a few weeks ago they changed out the ultra or the fluorescent tubes here in, in my apartment I'm in. And uh, so I'm trying to get color balance and I'm going to work and I may have to get a filter for ultraviolet lighting uh, to put over the camera lens. So that, that's my problem I had. If everybody noticed I was adjusting that. But overall, everybody was good framing and very little distracted noise, just occasionally a few things. 
Back to you. Thank you, Jim. The all counter tonight is Andy, and we will hear his report now. Thank you very much, Testmaster of the Day. David had one start over and the use of the word an on occasion. We don't normally do newbies with this unless you want, Elaine, but you did have a few. You had so and the um uh, three times. Uh, Jimmy from Colorado had an uh. Christian had a start over. Sam had an uh two times. Roger used the word anyway, which is sort of in the context of what he was doing was a bridge word. Uh, Scott had three so's, two ands, two start overs, and an okay. And otherwise, everybody did well. Thank you, Andy. The next report will come from the chat monitor, which was Adrian tonight. Hello, fellow Toastmasters and guests. There are three topics I'd like to go over. The green screen and Roger standing up, people did like that. They thought the use of the body language was great. It was something different for them and they did like that. Um, I like your body language too, but sometimes when we're doing it, we just have to slow down online and then it'll transform better. Uh, secondly, pathways, the evaluations for pathways. There was a comment about how you can address that outside of the clubs by using a tablet to download all the evaluation forms on there. And I brought up that David's website for our clubs has the abilities to have the, the evaluations for pathways electronically included. So David, if you could comment on that just to, verify, just to clarify that your site does have that capability. Uh, You're on mute. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yes, we, we, we do have the ability to uh, track the time for pathways projects. You can, you can pick a pathways project when you're signing up for a speech. Uh, and there's also an online evaluations tool that you should be able to copy and paste that somehow into Basecamp. Uh, I haven't gotten into Basecamp, mm -hmm. so I actually don't know for sure, but we're, we're trying, we're trying to support you and all that. I can, I can answer that, David. Um, within the projects, there's a downloadable evaluation form, which is not electronically filled in, but there's a page in Basecamp for everybody that has all the evaluation forms for all the projects on one page, and they're electronically filled in as a PDF. So we could, um, and you're, you have access to all of them across all the levels. So we could provide those e-fillable PDF evaluation forms to somebody that could load them into the website, which could make it easier to access them at, at the last minute. Right. It, there's a few different things that are, well, you know what, we'll find out more as we get into it. Okay. Right? And we can also address that second part on the next meeting. The last thing was um, unmuting the mic with the speaker. The only thing about it is if you're going to unmute your mic while the speaker is there, just be conscious that if you're typing, while we should be looking at the speaker, we're looking at you and we miss the speaker. So in those cases, just keep in mind of that. Otherwise, those were the hot topics. Thank you so much. And back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Monica. Thank you, Adrian. And as I get ready to turn it over to our president, according to Bugs Bunny, it's five o'clock somewhere. David, back <laughs> over to you. I thought that was Jimmy Buffett, but maybe maybe they they're, 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 not. They're pair, Jimmy they're Buffett stole it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they were all on the same team. Margaritaville. All right. So we'll we will follow up after this meeting to send out the agenda for next week. It'll be a similar program, part two from Scott Johnson about pathways, going into a little bit more depth, and a roundup of. Um, uh, we'll have room for two speaker, two other speeches if two people will sign up and two evaluations. So anybody have anything else that they want to bring up before we break for this evening?
next week, Lou Brown is our Toastmaster of the day. Woohoo! Awesome. All right. And remember to save the chat by clicking on the more button and save chat, and you can get the copy of the chat box. Thank you. All right. So I'll, I'll pause just a moment for, for people to do that. And, and we're on time. Yeah. Hey, how about that? Had to happen once. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I don't know if Christian was calling me names. Uh oh, or Roger's going to kill our time. <laughs> you know. All right. Even a blind squirrel can find an acorn in the dark sometimes. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we're going to say goodnight. Have a good one, everybody, and we'll see you next week. And, Thank you. And good night, everybody. Good night. We'll let good you night. know the uh, the big suspenseful, suspenseful vote. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>